Hi there, what's going on? Let's talk today a little bit about color modes. So if you have a look around you, you'll see there are so many colors in every single thing you see. These colors are very different one from the other. So a color on a fabric will be very different from a color in a book or on any device. And a color on your screen will be different from a color on stickers or food packages or just anything you can imagine. And the colors outside will be different from colors inside. You get that uh, textiles are different. So for all these different things, we need to have different color modes. We'll have one color mode for printing, another color mode for textiles, another color mode for screens and so on. Those are the color modes. I'm sure you heard of some of the color modes. We've got RGB, that's the color mode with the widest color range. RGB stands for red, green and blue. From any of those combinations of those colors, you can create almost any color possible. So each one ranges from one, 0 to 255, I think. And if you times 255 by 255 by 255, you'll get 16 million and something. That's how many colors you can get from RGB. So we use RGB for our screen. In your screen, if you look very, very closely, Obviously, you wouldn't be able to see because it's microscopic, but you have every pixel is made out of a small light of green color and a red color and a blue color, which light up in different percentages and different brightnesses to cause a combination of a color. So it's as if you're like pouring two parts green and one part blue and no part red just to combine those colors together to create a desired color you want which is why the higher the resolution is, the clearer the picture is because you have more of those colors and therefore it gives you more of a clearer view of that picture. So when the RGB colors or lights shine in the brightest color possible, that means you put RGB, red, green and blue in the highest level, then you'll get a white color. And when they're all down to zero, you'll get a black color, which is why when you're in a dark room or at night and you're busy looking at your screen and the screen is very bright, your eyes actually hurt you, that's because you have light shining on your face in the fullest volume possible. It may disturb or hurt your eye, which is also why if you have all the values of the red, green and blue equal, you will get different shades of gray. The higher the value is by all of them, the more brighter it will be. I hope it doesn't sound too complicated. So that's the color mode we'll be using for screen. So if you're creating anything on your screen for online PDF, a website, for WhatsApps, for any of that sort, then you would be using RGB. That's the most vivid, the best, biggest color range, like we said. And those are the best, clearest colors you can get for your screens. There is also a web safe RGB. That's just for olden day computers that they restrict their red, green and blue colors to a certain amount that the web accepts. Nowadays, I really don't think you have to worry about it because all the colors are web safe unless you're using a very old computer and you want to see the colors exactly how they're supposed to be. But I don't think you'll have to worry about that normally. So that's as far as screens go. When it comes to printing something, you would obviously need a different color mode because when you're printing, you don't have any light shining from your page and there's actually proper ink. For that, we have CMYK. That's the color mode for printing. It stands for cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. And the key, by the way, used to be in the printing press. They used to call black simply as the key. That's why it got the name as black for key. But those are the four main colors from which any color which you print is made from. Those are colors which are actually in your printer. It's not as wide ranged as the RGB and it doesn't look as vivid as and bright as the RGB because it's not made from actual light shining at you. It's ink which is put onto the paper. And therefore, typically, normally it will be more dull than your bright screen. You could sometimes, you do see a very bright colors when you print, like for wedding invitations, you see like a gold and embers and all those stuff. 
that's not the CMYK those are different ink specially made for that or printed on special paper but the classic CMYK is what you see on the boring pages or regular printed colors if you want to get black from CMYK so here since this is actual colors you wouldn't be putting down the values to zero like we said in RGB remember if you turn off all the lights then you'll get black but here this is ink so therefore if you don't pour any ink you will get just the page color so here to get black you'll need to pour all the ink so you can get you can put down a hundred percent of c m y and k of sand magenta yellow and black and then you'll get black but you really wouldn't want to do such a thing because since we're dealing with proper ink therefore when you're printing and you're actually putting so much ink down on your paper you would most likely have big problems when you're printing it because the ink is wet it will take a long time to dry it might crease or wrinkle the page and it might give you problems in the printing which is exactly why they suggest that you put 50% of cyan magenta and yellow that's the first three and 100% of black that will give you a rich black but not too rich so that you have problems in the printing and if you're making this black for text then it will be enough if you just have a hundred percent of black and all the rest of the sand magenta and yellow at zero percent that will look black enough and it doesn't have to be text normally doesn't have to be like very thick and bold and rich black unless obviously you want to have it as a main letterhead or something that you want to have it in a very rich color but normally text you wouldn't have in such a rich black so that's you'll do the black color in CMYK. Then we have another color mode, HSB or HSV, it's the same thing. That stands for hue, saturation and brightness or hue, saturation and value. The hue is the color itself, green, blue, orange, any color which you have, that's the hue. It ranges anywhere from one degree to 360 degrees, normally it works with degrees. And the saturation is the amount of color that you're adding it doesn't mean dark or light color it just means how how intense the color will be it can be very intense color or a very dull color it's as if you're painting something you can paint with one coat and you will see a very light color or you can paint with lots of coats and you'll see a thick heavy color it's not a light or darker it's just stronger or less of that and then we have the brightness or the value and that's how much how bright it will be it can either be very light color or very dark color so that will just give you different shades within that color range and then there are many other color modes there's lab which is based on color that the eye sees that's mainly for textiles they use it for vehicles for all those things these are the main color modes which we'll be using especially in illustrator there's also tints and shades tints is just adding white to the hue and shades is adding black to the hue tones is adding gray to the hue and then we have warm colors cold colors warm colors is like a red orange yellow and cold colors is like purple and green and blue it's more cold and less appealing color normally less exciting and less uh, vivid and we have complementary and monochromatic and all these different color modes that's just different ways of getting colors based on the color wheel so you can get colors from the opposite side on the color wheel or the opposite split to three or split to four or the colors next to each other so a whole world of colors out there i'm sure some of you know a lot more than i do about all this then we've got the hex value of each color that's the name or correspondent of each color it's made out of a hashtag and then six digits or letters after that the first two is that stands for the red colors the second two for the green colors and the third two for the blue so that's rgb you can actually see it here if we give let's say the same value for the red and the green then we'll see that these colors are the same let's just give that one as well then we can see this number repeats itself each time because this represents the red and the green so you see i just changed that one there the lowest value will be when all the digits are zero and then we'll get a black color because it's the same thing as putting red green and blue 
on zero which means you're turning off the light basically like we explained it and the highest value will be when all the digits or letters will be f that's the highest value there'll be a white color so you can copy it from there and send it if you want to show whoever you want to show the color then you would be able to copy the hex value of the color and then he can place it in and see exactly which color it was or you can even put in your own color so i can put in my whichever color this would be so you can put in any color there you'll get a color here you can even search the web for that hex value and you'll get very nice combinations that go well with that color like complementary and monochromatic and all of those sorts of things fine so just to go over it very quickly we've got quite a few color modes you can see here there's hsb that stands for hue saturation and brightness the hue is the color and the saturation is the amount of that color the intensity and the brightness is how dark or bright the color will be the RGB stands for red, green, and blue. These are colors typically used for screens. And like we said, every screen consists from those colors. So that's what the screen is made from. And then we have CMYK, which is the colors for printing. So you have cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. Those are colors which you have in your printer. The RGB is anywhere from zero to 255, I think. You could also get RGB in a percentage value. Zero would be 0% and 255 would be 100% and the percentage wise will be anywhere between them. And then we have the hex value of every color, which you can use as a reference. Also, by the way, when you're exporting any work, if you're a freelancer or anything of that sort, then normally you would put your hex values or each value of every color which you used in that work which you did and if you're using it to design a website then you'll probably be using the css properties window you can always get it from window and you can see there the hex value of each color which you use for the border for the fill and every shape which you use in your document we'll learn all about that in another video so thank you so much for joining me on this video if you gained anything only if you gained something please give a like and subscribe also don't forget to share any of your comments ideas or just anything you want to add or say or ask at the comments below and i'll see you in the next video thank you